Okay, uh, so good morning, everyone. I'd like to tell you about our uh, work with uh, Andreas Ringwald, uh, who is also here, uh, which is uh, based on uh, this uh, paper uh, about the electromagnetic couplings of axions. And uh, first of all, uh, I will discuss some topic uh, which is similarly unrelated to axions, but which is related to the Maxwell equations. And we will discuss some generalizations of axion Maxwell equations, uh, which will be based on uh, the uh, applications of electric magnetic duality symmetry. So let us discuss what this symmetry is. And I guess everyone uh, here knows that the free Maxwell equations. Uh, which are written in terms of the magnetic field and the electric field here, they invariant with respect to this rotation in the electric magnetic uh, plane of uh, the electric and magnetic fields. Uh, so this symmetry is very easy to see uh, at the level of the equations of motion, but it is not so easy to see it uh, in the Lagrangian approach. So really, if you write the uh, expression for the electromagnetic action, at first sight, it seems that uh, this expression is not invariant with respect to the symmetry. Indeed, this is E squared minus H squared, and there is no invariance. However, uh, uh, the caveat is that uh, the action is necessarily a functional of the potential, not uh, of the uh, fields. So we have to consider action as a function of, of the potentials and uh, uh, make our transformation uh, uh, of the potentials, not of the fields. So if we rewrite now the action in terms of uh, the uh, transverse part of the vector potential, which is relevant for free electromagnetic fields, so this is the physical part of the four potential, uh, then we see that there is a non-local uh, transformation of uh, this four potential, uh, which uh, uh, so of the, of the vector potential, which uh, preserves uh, SO2 because it shifts uh, the Lagrangian by uh, a total time derivative. Uh, so it is important that this transformation is non-local in space, so it contains an inverse curl operator. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, now let us see how axion uh, 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 affects uh, this electric magnetic duality symmetry. As we saw, first of all, this symmetry is a good uh, symmetry of the Lagrangian, of the theory, and so it uh, uh, also means that there exists uh, a conserved current corresponding to the symmetry, which is uh, helicity of the electromagnetic field. And helicity of the electromagnetic field is composed out of two uh, contributions. One is the electric helicity, and the other is the magnetic helicity. So I don't give here the expression because it's very large, uh, because the magnetic helicity part contains uh, a non-local expression inside. A again, because of the non-local structure of this symmetry. Uh, but then, if we couple axion uh, to the conventional f of dual expression, uh, what, uh, what is usually done is actually a coupling of axion to only the electric part of the helicity. So this can be seen if we write this as, as a gradient of axion times the helicity. And, and here uh, the, there will be only the electric part. Uh, and when we calculate the equations of motion uh, varying over the four potential a mu, we obtain this expression, which is obviously not symmetric with respect to the electric magnetic duality symmetry. So we, yeah, it's easy to see that uh, if you exchange electric and magnetic fields, you get a different expression with different phenological consequences. So the question is, okay, then we see that axion breaks uh, the electric magnetic duality symmetry in some particular way. So can it uh, break uh, this symmetry in some other way? Uh, and uh, if yes, uh, in what theories? Uh, okay, so uh, uh, to see the point, let us consider an example. So we will change uh, a viewpoint uh, on uh, the particles of the standard model. And uh, uh, so, uh, in fact, the duality invariance of uh, the free electromagnetic fields means uh, that absolute directions in the electric magnetic plane have no physical meaning. So, say, uh, one can think of uh, the uh, usual particles as carrying magnetic charges, and uh, the physics will be the same. So in such a dual picture, then uh, the electromagnetic field will be derived from a dual four potential here, uh, which I denote as B. And uh, then uh, we can consider again 
the same uh, axion photon Lagrangian. But really, it is no longer the same because now we quantize the theory in terms of the B potential. Uh, and uh, this, as I said before, Lagrangian is essentially a functional of the potentials, not of the fields. This means that uh, this expression is actually different from, from this expression which, which uh, we had before and which one considers uh, in the conventional uh, approach. And so uh, we denote this coupling now by G bar. And the equations of motion also are different because we were right now uh, different Lagrangian. So, uh, and uh, uh, we can see now that we get, instead of the effective electric current and electric charge, we get effective magnetic current and magnetic charge. So you see the divergence of H now is proportional to the gradient of the axion field, and uh, here we get also the effective magnetic current contribution. Okay, so we see that in principle such coupling can arise. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, uh, it is interesting to see and uh, one wants to see in which uh, particular models do these couplings arise. Maybe there are no uh, UV-complete models in which these couplings can arise, so they are of no relevance. Uh, so, and uh, then uh, the question is, if they arise, what are the expected values of these couplings? What is the general form of the axiom Maxwell equations? Because also, uh, in this change of a viewpoint example, Right, we only consider that uh, all the particles have uh, magnetic charges, but really, because the absolute direction, the electric magnetic field uh, space uh, is not uh, uh, relevant, then you could also say that all the particles in the stand model are dions. They have both magnetic and electric charges. And the physics will not change. Uh, and uh, then, uh, so maybe we get some new couplings and we'll see that we do get them. Uh, and, uh, of course, the interesting question is what is the phenomenology of these new couplings? And to answer the first question, in which models these couplings arise, uh, let us uh, uh, remember how uh, axion photon coupling arises in the first place in the models which we know. So in, uh, in these models, axion interacts with photons through a loop of uh, uh, some fermion. Uh, so, uh, say, in case with Z models, uh, this is some new heavy quark which, is, uh, which has a mass uh, uh, way higher than the low energy scale of the standard model here. And uh, usually, uh, uh, so this uh, quark can be considered as having the electric charge and then it leads to the coupling of axion to photons. Uh, but uh, as we saw, uh, also, from this description, it is easy to see now why uh, this coupling breaks electric magnetic duality symmetry. Uh, it breaks it because uh, it involves a heavy electric particle, which is not seen at the, at the level of low energy theory, but it does exist in the full theory, and it contributes to this diagram. So we can uh, imagine now that uh, the uh, theory which will lead to the coupling of axion to the magnetic part of the helicity is uh, will have uh, magnetically charged particles running in the loop. And uh, in fact, this is uh, the right consideration as we found. And, uh, but uh, first let us uh, discuss uh, in general what are magnetic charges, what are magnetic monopoles, uh, and uh, why such theories which contain magnetic monopoles as uh, particles uh, can be theoretically motivated. And in fact, they are very well theoretically motivated because uh, there is a uh, uh, yeah, there is a puzzle in the standard model, which existed even before the creation of the standard model. Uh, it is why uh, the ele electron and the proton have the same absolute charges. Or in other uh, words, why uh, the electric uh, charge in nature is quantized. There is no reason in the, uh, so in the existing theories uh, uh, which describe nature, like in the standard model. And uh, indeed, it was explained uh, back in 1931 by Dirac, who showed uh, that uh, the electric charge is automatically quantized in, a series, in the series which contain magnetic monopoles. Because uh, in, for the consistency of the quantum theory, uh, uh, this condition should be satisfied. So the uh, product of electric and magnetic charge is equals to 2 pi times some integer. Uh, and this means that the, all the electric charges in nature are quantized. Uh, but in fact, uh, it was found later that this argument is even reversed. So actually, in any consistent quantum gravity with quantized electric charges, 
uh, one would have one will have magnetic monopoles, as it was shown uh, by uh, theorists and mathemat mathematicians. Uh, and this f follows from the no global symmetries conjecture uh, of the quantum gravity. Also, magnetic monopoles arise naturally in grand unified theories. So they explain also. So they also arise naturally in the models which uh, unify forces, as it was shown by Toft and Polakov. Uh, so uh, yeah, string theorist Polchinski, for example, says that magnetic monopoles are one of the safest bets uh, that one can make about physics not yet seen. But the problem is that the mass of, of uh, monopoles is not known, and in many models uh, it is super heavy. And the solution is to look for indirect effects of monopoles. Uh, so, uh, and we will uh, look for such effects in the action photon interactions. Uh, so here you can see the plot of the action photon coupling versus mass uh, with many constraints and uh, QCD band as discussed in this conference many times. Uh, and it is based on this Lagrangian where F is given by the uh, A uh, for potential. So the question at the effective field theory uh, level is uh, whether this is the most general action photon Lagrangian. It's normally one, say, one says, of course, yes, because this is the most general Lagrangian consistent with the symmetries of the theory, like axion shift symmetry, uh, gauge invariance. Uh, but uh, as, uh, what we found is that as long as one includes uh, magnetic monopoles into the theory, this is no longer true one can construct a more general Lagrangian. And this has to do with the fact that uh, the quantum field theory, which involves magnetic monopoles, has a uh, different structure compared to the quantum electrodynamics we know. So such theory was constructed in 60s and 70s by Schwinger, Zwanziger, and some other people. So we will consider the uh, contribution by Zwanziger, uh, who found uh, the Lagrangian, local Lagrangian for uh, the uh, quantum electromagnetodynamics. And uh, in this uh, description, two vector potentials, A and B, describe one particle photon. So what is important due to the very unconventional kinetic term, uh, 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 the each four potential uh, uh, after uh, fixing the gauge freedom has only one degree of freedom. So this is not like a uh, uh, hidden photon theory where you have two four potentials and they both have two degrees of freedom. Here, uh, each has one degree of freedom, and in the end, so in, in the whole theory, you have only two degrees of freedom, and this is really describing only one particle photon and only one version of electromagnetism. Uh, now, uh, the theory is Lorentz invariant, although the kinetic part con contains some fixed four vectors, so this is a peculiarity of the theory, uh, and remainder of the, the Dirac string, one, one can say, uh, and it was shown in past integral formalisms that this uh, uh, extra a uh, fixed vector actually does not contribute to the correlation functions of the theory uh, after you, uh, so, so to say, sum all the orders. And the theory is essentially non-perturbative because of uh, the inclusion of this vector n and also because the magnetic charge is large. Uh, so also what is interesting is that the theory is generally not CP invariant. Uh, and now, so we constructed the generic axion photon effective field theory using uh, the Zwanziger theory. And uh, what we found is that there can exist uh, more uh, axion photon operators uh, than usually, in, in usual theories. So, and this has to do, of course, with uh, the fact that now we have two four potentials. And this means that we can have both, so here are the notations, uh, both uh, f, of, f of dual represented like dA, dA dual, but also by, by dB, dB dual construction and dA, dB dual constructions. Uh, so these are all uh, also uh, terms preserving the action shift symmetry because uh, all these constructions under the trace are actually total derivatives. Uh, and uh, so you can easily see that the shift symmetry is conserved. Uh, now we, we will not discuss this term, which, has, uh, which arises only in the series of toft polykov monopoles uh, due to the fact that toft polykov monopoles contain an extra instant on degree of freedom and uh, the Witten effect is relevant there. Uh, so, but it is more complicated and we, we have no time for this. So, but these uh, three terms, so this term we already saw uh, in our uh, naive example in the beginning, but this term is interesting because it violates uh, uh, the C CP. So this can be easily seen from the fact that A and B have different parities because this is magnetic and electric uh, potentials. 
so and electric and magnetic fields have different parities. Uh, so uh, this effective field theory actually is valid uh, for any action or axion like particles, so we didn't make an assumption that this is necessarily a QCD axion. Uh, and uh, these coefficients here, the, the new couplings can be calculated in any model, uh, in any particular UV complete model. Uh, but the general feature due to the quantization condition uh, is that uh, the largest coupling is the BB coupling because uh, in uh, the Zwanziger theory, you always have uh, the second four potential coming with the factor of the magnetic charge. And uh, you always have uh, this A uh, potential coming with the factor of the electric charge. So actually this is a uh, usual coupling proportional to E squared, but this now is proportional to G squared. So uh, which is due to the quantization condition like 1 over e squared, so very large. And this is proportional to the uh, e times g, so electric charge times the magnetic charge. So this is like an intermediate strength coupling. Okay, so now let me come uh, briefly to the phenomenology of these couplings. So from the Lagrangian, we can derive uh, the Maxwell equations uh, and... Uh, uh, so here I write them in terms of the electric and magnetic fields, and I underlined uh, the dominant contributions. So the most dominant contribution is the BB coupling, as I said, uh, in, and uh, AB is the second dominant contribution. Uh, so you can see that uh, without these contributions, this is just uh, the equations considered by Sikivi. Uh, and in analyzing this equation, we see that many processes are actually uh, can be easily calculated with these equations because uh, uh, pro uh, the, any processes which create or destroy axions, they are actually given by this uh, axion equation, so can be calculated from the axion equation of motion. And as you see here, A and BB couplings enter symmetrically. So all that we have to do in uh, the, our equations is to uh, substitute A A coupling, so the usual A gamma gamma coupling, by A B B coupling. So the, uh, so to say, the, the parameter space. Uh, uh, and the constraints on the AA coupling will translate on the constraints on the BB coupling automatically. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and, uh, but uh, in some cases, for some experiments, uh, this is no longer true, and we get a uh, difference uh, because, uh, and this is the case of uh, the uh, holoscope experiments which look for dark matter axions uh, with the wavelengths much larger than the size of the detector. In this case, what is measured uh, is uh, not the total power radiated by axions, but uh, some induced uh, axion uh, magnetic fields usually. Uh, so here is a conventional case. Uh, so why the magnetic fields are measured? Because uh, if you solve these equations, you see that the axion induced magnetic field is much larger than the axion induced electric field. But actually, uh, now in the series with magnetic monopoles, the dominant contribution is not the effective electric current, but the effective magnetic current. And you get a different expression solving these uh, equations that the, now the axion electric field dominates. So uh, many experiments which are, uh, use uh, magnetometers are not, now not so sensitive to these uh, uh, models of axions. Uh, so in the light shines through wall experiments, uh, so uh, also the egg, so we are dealing with the disappearance and uh, uh, appearance of the axion particles. So the, the results stay more or less the same, but now because we have uh, the control over the initial polarization of, egg, of, the, uh, for, of the laser uh, beam, uh, we are actually have also uh, access to the AB coupling. And if we measure in some experiment BB coupling, then later we can also measure the AB coupling with the next generation experiments. So uh, now let me con uh, conclude with this plot. So uh, uh, here we, we plotted this uh, uh, new axion photon couplings in different uh, models, uh, different minimal models with uh, minimal charge assignments to the new heavy fermions. Uh, and uh, what we see is that axion dark matter, uh, which now lives here on the axion uh, photon coupling plot, can be easier to detect. Uh, yeah, so holoscopes with electric sensors would be helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, ALPS2 is now sensitive to the QCD axion. 
uh, which is interesting. And here is the difference. So actually, all these projections from the low mass section telescope experiments they go away because uh, yeah, we, we no longer have a good sensitivity to the uh, yeah, so the magnetic field is suppressed with respect to electric field. And here I also show the region which is uh, preferred in the pre-inflation scenario uh, for dark matter generation. So as you see, this region it will be probed by ABS2 and IAXO, so, which is nice. Uh, okay, so uh, with this I conclude that uh, yeah, heavy magnetic monopoles can uh, influence low energy physics in this interesting way. Thank you for your attention. Oh, thanks for the really interesting talk. Um, quick question, uh, how, have you looked into how that it affects um, astrophysical limits uh, in, in this scenario? Yes, yeah, so uh, most, uh, actually, uh, most astrophysical limits are based on the Primakov conversion in stars uh, and, uh, or the conversion uh, in magnetic fields, and that's why it is actually the processes of uh, this type here, uh, of these two types. And actually, this depends on the action. So this process can be calculated using the action equation of motion. And uh, as, I, as I said here, all that you do is actually you uh, substitute uh, usual AA coupling but by the sum of AA and BB couplings. That's why, so to say, all the limits which are now uh, valid for the AA coupling are also valid for the BB coupling. In this way, it's the same. Is it straightforward to understand how this would be embedded in the standard model, given that we have electroweak symmetry that is chiral, mm -hmm. and necessarily you have to have anomaly cancellation, some self-consistency with mm -hmm. SU2? Yes, so you will have, uh, you can embed it in, a very, in the most straightforward way, because all you add is some new, so in case with that like model, say you, all you add is a new vector-like quark, so because it's vector-like, you already have a anomaly constellation, and uh, so you have no problem. You just add, uh, uh, as in the usual scenario, you add a piche queen scalar complex field, and you add a, a heavy quark, but now, instead of electric charge, it has magnetic charge, and so everything works. Yeah, but the monopole solution needs to be embedded too. Ah, so. uh, yes, yeah, so uh, you mean uh, how to construct the monopoles? Yes. So first of all, you can say uh, the, to treat them as uh, like fundamental particles. In principle, there is nothing wrong. But if you want to construct, uh, to construct them in some like tov polykov way, uh, then uh, this is more complicated. We haven't done this. But in, f in principle, it seems not to be impossible because uh, it is known that tov polykov monopoles can actually be fermionic. So the main, the main problem is to make them fermionic. But there are works by Jarkiv, Toft, which show that uh, there are some solutions uh, where these solitons, they have fermionic spin one half. But you know, so we haven't constructed like a explicit model, but it would be interesting to yeah. uh, Thank you. think about it. Yes, this is very interesting. Uh, do you have any typical value of this GAB? Because this looks very similar to Euler, Euler, Euler uh, Heisenberg. That, that is usually only the uh, function of a fine co a structure constant. Because my, I'm afraid that the, we may not be able to distinguish these two effects in the experiment. Mm. So uh, yeah, from this, like. Uh uh, using only this probe, uh, it is not possible yes, to, distin be, uh, to distinguish because uh, qu uh, qualitatively you get the same result. Like, I mean, but uh, so you can distinguish in these holoscope experiments because you, you have uh, this different behavior. So you have uh, induced action uh, uh, electric field, so action induced uh, electric field instead of the magnetic field. So you can really see this. And the characteristic values of, of these BB couplings, yes, so we give them in the paper, and they actually are, so they look like, uh, okay, uh, one moment. Uh, so they are similar to this expression, uh, it's just that you substitute E squared with G squared. So actually, the, uh, yeah, and you don't have this contribution from pions because uh, yeah, pions constru construct from electrical particles. Um, so since when the, with the existence of the monopoles, there's an additional uh, CP violation. Um, if, uh, 
have you looked at or, or could you look at perhaps uh, you know the electric dipole moment coupling like what Casper mm -hmm. searches for would that uh, perhaps since there's an additional source of CP violation could you get a larger or you know a different effect uh, than just the, the usual scenario uh, yes, so you indeed, uh, so you're supposed to get some uh, new contribution to the uh, electric dipole moment of electrons or muons, say, so of particles which carry electric charge, yes. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, so, but to calculate, yeah, so you can estimate this, uh, but to calculate this, uh, c um, this extra contribution exactly, uh, so we are now don't know how to do it because this uh, Zwanziger theory is non-perturbative and um, it's not, uh, and you have to calculate a loop and now this loop is no longer given by anomaly. So uh, why we could calculate this section photon coupling because uh, um, uh, it, it is actually anomaly, it, is, it does not receive any high order corrections, so to say. So you can calculate it non-perturbatively. But if you consider interaction with electrons, say, uh, in this way, then uh, you have to, uh, yeah, you have to calculate in perturbation theory, and uh, now the perturbation theory doesn't work. Maybe yeah, it's possible to calculate on the latest, say. So, but yeah, we don't know.